Hey guys, what's up? Avi here and welcome back to the Codex. In this video, we're continuing our project weather dashboard in Flask. And today we're gonna to be creating our API account and calling our API in Python. So we'll essentially learn how to use this application program interface, this kind of protocol in order to get the weather data. And then we'll go ahead and render those results in a simple Python script. Let's get started. So first thing first, some basics about this project. I love using the PyCharm editor for all of my programming tasks. If you want to go ahead and copy me, feel free to download PyCharm. They have a free community version that I would definitely recommend. However, any editor of your choosing is fine. There's Atom, there's Sublime Text, there's all these different online resources that you can use. So feel free and use whatever floats your boat. I myself have been using PyCharm my entire life and would definitely recommend the community version if you want the free version. Or if you're a student, you can get the professional version for free. So with that said, over here, I have this Python project created. Right now, it's an empty folder. There's nothing inside of it. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is create a brand new Python file and call this app.py. So this Python file is going to be where we create our Flask application and call our API. So to call our API, we're gonna need our API URL. There has to be a link to get that data. So the link that's going to fetch us that data is going to come from Open Weather. Open Weather Map is an online company that has a very popular weather API. I believe over 2 billion requests are made every single day. I think that's their headline on their website. And what I can go ahead and say is they have an amazing free API that we can use to gather data. So what I want you to go ahead and do is head over to openweathermap.org, sign in and make an account here. So I'm already signed in, but if I go ahead and open up this URL in an incognito page, there we go. And now I go ahead and sign in over here. I can actually go ahead and create an account. So not register, create an account. And over here, go ahead and fill out this flow. So it's gonna ask for a username, an email, a password. Feel free to check these boxes. And then if you wanna receive communication, go for it. Otherwise, just go ahead and follow this flow. And after that, you should go ahead and get a confirmation email in your inbox. Once you go ahead and confirm your email, they will give you an API key. This API key will look something like this. Dear customer, thank you for subscribing to Open Weather Map. This is your API key. The only problem with this service is that it takes a couple hours to minutes for it to be activated. In my case, it took 20 minutes for my API key to be activated. In some other cases, it can take up to an hour, hopefully not longer than that. So what I'd go ahead and say is wait a couple minutes and continuously refresh this link. If this link works for you and you see this JSON format, then you know that the API key has been activated. Otherwise, if you see like a 401 error, that was the error that I was running into before, then just go ahead and keep on waiting. It shouldn't take too long. I'd actually recommend following along the other parts because those have nothing to do with the API until the very end when we combine all the resources together. But for now, just go ahead and make sure you have an API key that works. In my case, I can see that the JSON has been rendering with the data for London. Now, if you're also wondering how my JSON might look a bit different than yours, it's because I have a Chrome extension, JSON Beautifier. So if you search JSON Beautifier Chrome extension, you can go ahead and install this on your computer. I think it's called JSON Formatter actually. And if you install this and add it to Chrome, you can actually visualize and beautify the JSON rather than seeing raw JSON like this. There is two huge differences in the way that I'm seeing my JSON versus what you might be seeing. And if you wanna go ahead and just kind of like pretty print your JSON, I would definitely recommend installing a Chrome extension to do so. But anyways, now that we have our API key, our goal for this video is to go ahead and call that data in Python. So. Let's head over to our app.py file. And for now, let's not even worry about any of the Flask code. Our goal is to just request this data and print it out. So there's a module in Python called requests. And what I want you to go ahead and do is install that module. So you're gonna go ahead and say Python 3, if you're using Python 3 version, um, you can check your version by typing Python dash dash version. Locally on my machine, it's 2.7.16. Again, this is in terminal. But if I type Python 3, which is what I've set my interpreter to be, it is 3.7.7. So in this case, I wanna go ahead and say Python 3 dash M pip install requests. And so all I'm doing is I'm using the Python package manager pip to install requests. 
And the reason why I'm doing Python 3 M pip is because I want to make sure that I'm using the pip associated with Python 3.7 and not the Python 2.7 version on my machine. So I go ahead and install that. It says requirement already satisfied. And that means request is good to go. So at the very top of app.py, go ahead and import requests. After that, we're going to go ahead and create a function. And this function will take in a zip code and an API key and return us the results of calling the API. So def get weather results. And over here, we're going to take in a zip code and an API key. And we're going to go ahead and specify an API URL. So what is the URL of our choice? Well, let's go back to the documentation and read what's up. If I go to the API and I click on current weather data, this is the API that we want to use, the current weather of our location. And I search over here by zip code. This is the API key that we want to go ahead and call. As you can see, this is the request API to openweathermap.org. Here we can specify in the parameters zip code, country code, and the API key. And if we specify all of these resources, then it'll generate this data for us. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is copy this API call. So command C this or control C if you're on Windows, head back over to PyCharm or your interpreter and specify over here my API URL is equal to this string. However, there's two things here that I'm going to change. First of all, I'm actually going to remove the country code. Since I'm in the United States, it defaults to USA if a country code is not specified. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And the second thing is I'm going to use what is called formatting in Python or formatting strings in Python to format this string with the two variables we're passing in over here. So if I zoom out just a bit, I have these two variables, zip code and API key, and I want to pass these variables inside of my API request. So I'm going to specify that my zip should be equal to the zip code that I'm passing in over here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and actually ignore these, um, format these files. There we go. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and remove this and remove this, the text inside. And then at the end of the string, type dot format. And so the format function will look for these brackets and input in the variables that we specify into the string. So I'm formatting this string with the zip of zip code and the app ID, which in this case is the API key with the API key we pass into this function. So hopefully all of this makes sense. All we're doing is we're formatting our API URL to follow the format that's specified in open weather. Open weather is asking for a zip, which it should be a zip code and the app ID, which is our API key. That's exactly the parameters that we want to pass in. So let's go back to PyCharm over here. And for now, let's go ahead and print out our API URL. So that's it. Something very, very simple. And now I'm going to go ahead and call this function. So get weather results. I'm going to pass in here uh, a zip code, which is my zip code 95129. And I'm going to pass in my API key. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this, paste it in. So let's go ahead and format this API URL just one last time and specify this to be HTTP colon slash slash. And that will go ahead and make this a valid API URL. Now, if I go ahead and run this, if you're on PyCharm, control shift R, or if you're using an interpreter that may be external, just type Python three app.py. And that gets me this URL. If I click on it right now and go to the web page, I can see that the API worked and it was a valid API URL because of the JSON response that I'm seeing back. Fantastic. So we're almost done with this video guys. The last thing that I want to do is actually convert this data and call it in Python. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is use the request module that we have over here and specify request.get API URL. I want to save this response in a variable called R. And then actually I'm going to go ahead and return this in a JSON like format. So return R dot JSON. So what this does is Python will go ahead and request the data from our API URL, return this JSON. And now we can go ahead and print this out. So print out this response and let's go ahead and see how this looks. So control shift R or run Python three app.py. And there we go. That is the JSON of our response. Fantastic job. One last thing before I end this video guys. And that is that we want to go ahead and actually store our API key in a configuration file. We don't want to store this blatantly inside of our app.py code. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually create a file called config.ini create a new file 
config.ini. And INI files in Python are a very easy way to store configurations. And inside of my configuration file, I'm going to specify that this is the open weather map project. And inside of this, I have a configuration, my API key, which should be equal to the API key I just added. So this entire string. So go ahead and create this file config.ini. You have your open weather map, and then you have your API key over here, which is this text. Now what you're going to go ahead and do is install one more module, python 3-m pip install. And what we're going to go ahead and install is actually going to be a module called config parser. And what this will allow us to do is essentially read this config.ini file and get this API key. So I'm going to create a new function over here, define get API key. And inside of this, I'm going to go ahead and say my config to be equal to config parser dot config parser. And the reason why it's not auto completing right now is because I need to import it. So import config parser up top. And once I have my configuration, I'm going to read in the INI file I just made. So config dot INI, and then I can get the API key by saying return config. And then inside of this, the app that we just made open weather map, and then the key API. So it's essentially going to open this config the INI file, look for open weather map, get the API value. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is rather than hard code this API key, I can go ahead and say get API key instead. And so now if I run this command, control shift R, I can see the exact same result, except our code is a lot more cleaner because we've stored this API key in this configuration file. Fantastic job, guys. That's it for this lecture. And I will see you in the next video.